OK, so we're going to find all real and complex solutions to this equation. And to get started, we're just going to rearrange this a bit to make it nicer to work with. So you might spot, first of all, that 64 is 2 to the power of 6. So this allows us to write the whole equation then as 1 minus x to the 6 equals 2 to the 6 times x to the 6. Now if we actually divide by 2 to the 6 and x to the 6 on both sides, so you notice that x equals 0 isn't going to be a solution, so there's no issue with division by 0. So dividing by both of these allows us to write the left-hand side as 1 minus x over 2x, all raised to the power of 6, and then the right-hand side is just 1, which is quite nice. And then to make this even nicer to work with, we could replace this 1 minus x over 2x by a new variable. So we could call this z, define this to equal to 1 minus x over 2x, and then our equation simply becomes z to the power of 6 equals 1, which is now something that we can solve using our knowledge of complex roots of unity. And then once we've got our values of z, we can rearrange here and find our x values. So our complex roots of unity, the solutions to this equation, z to the 6 equals 1, first of all we just get z equals 1, our first real solution. But then for our next solution, we're going to have, it's going to be e to the 2 pi i over 6. So this becomes e to the pi over 3 times i, because 2 divided by 6 gives us 1 third. And what's going on here is we're effectively using the piece of information that e to the 2 pi i is equivalent to 1. So if you think we raise this to the power of 6, we're going to get e to the 2 pi i, which is equivalent to 1. And for our next complex root of unity, we go up to e to the 2 pi over 3 times i. And here, if we raise this to the power of 6, we're getting e to the 4 pi i, which is just 1 squared, which is also just 1. Then we can keep going like this. We do e to the 3 pi i over 3 is actually just e to the pi i, which is negative 1, our second real solution. So we'll just write that one as negative 1. Then our next one will be e to the 4 pi i over 3. And finally, we would have e to the 5 pi times i divided by 3. And we don't need to go any further, because then when we go up to e to the 6 pi i over 3, this is just e to the 2 pi i, which is a different representation for the number 1. And if we were to go further, e to the 7 pi over 3 times i, this will be a different representation for this complex number. It's just been multiplied by e to the 2 pi i, or just multiplied by 1. So we've got our six complex solutions then for our value of z, and then we just need to rearrange this to find our values of x. So just very quickly rearranging this then, we can multiply by 2x on both sides. So I'll write this as 2z times x equals 1 minus x. Then we want to make x the subject, so we can gather our x terms onto the left-hand side and factorise. So 2z plus 1 times x equals 1. And then dividing by 2z plus 1, we're just going to get x equals 1 over 2z plus 1. So now we've got our six values of z, and we just need to substitute these in now to our x values to find the six solutions to our original equation written in terms of x. So let's start with the easy solutions. We'll do the real solutions. So first of all, when z is 1, we substitute this in. We get x is 1 over 2 plus 1, so we just get x equals 1 third as our first real solution. And then when z is negative 1, again, we just substitute this in. So when z is negative 1, x becomes 1 over negative 2 plus 1, so 1 over negative 1, and we see that x is just equal to negative 1. So these are our two real solutions. So now let's have a look at what happens with one of the complex values of z. So if we take e to the pi over 3i as our first value, we're going to actually use the fact that e to the pi over 3i, we can rewrite this as cos pi over 3 plus i times sine pi over 3. So this is just Euler's theorem, where we can replace this pi over 3 by any value theta there, and this identity would still work. And then we know the value of cos pi over 3. This is just a half, and we also know the value of sine pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. So we can write all of this over a common denominator of 2, and we get 1 plus root 3 times i, all divided by 2 as our z values. So then when we substitute this in for our x, we have x is 1 over 2z plus 1. So when we multiply by 2, this gets rid of the 2 in the denominator. So we get x is going to be 1 over 1 plus root 3 times i. And we've still got plus another 1 here. So this is really 1 over 2 plus 
root 3 times i. So now to put this into a slightly nicer format, we're going to multiply on the top and bottom of this fraction by the conjugate of the denominator. So we're going to multiply all of this by 2 minus root 3i, and we're going to multiply by 2 minus root 3i on the top as well. So this really ought to be in brackets here now. So then we can find for our value of x, the numerator is just going to be 2 minus root 3 times i, and our denominator then we have 2 squared gives us 4, and then we have plus root 3 squared gives us 4 plus 3 is 7. So we get a denominator there of 7, and the middle two terms cancel because this is a difference of two squares expression. So now we've found one of our roots then, one of our solutions in terms of x, where z was e to the pi over 3 times i. So now if we try z equals e to the 2 pi over 3 times i, we can again rewrite this as cos 2 pi over 3 plus i sine 2 pi over 3. And we know that cos 2 pi over 3 is negative a half, and we also know that sine 2 pi over 3 is again root 3 over 2. So we can write these over a common denominator. We've got negative 1 plus root 3, and remember this is being multiplied by i, and this is all divided by 2. So this is our value of z, but then we want to substitute this in to find x. So to find the value of x, we do 1 over 2 times z plus 1. So again, the 2s will cancel when we multiply z by 2. So we get 1 over negative 1 plus root 3i, and finally plus 1. So here your negative 1 and the plus 1 cancel with each other, and this just becomes 1 over root 3 times i. And then if we multiply the numerator and denominator by root 3 and also by i, so we've got root 3 times i, and again root 3 times i, we can also multiply by a negative 1 as well, just make these negative. And the reason we're doing this is so that the i squared and the negative just give us a positive denominator then. So we can rewrite all of this as negative root 3 times i, and then the denominator just becomes 3. So we get negative root 3 over 3, we'll write it like this, negative root 3 over 3 times i, where we've rationalised the denominator and got the i out of the denominator as well. So now if we do the same but with z equals e to the 4 pi over 3i, once again we can write this using Euler's theorem, so 4 pi over 3 i gives us cos 4 pi over 3 plus i sine 4 pi over 3. And we know that cos 4 pi over 3 is going to be negative a half, and here we get now negative root 3 over 2 for sine 4 pi over 3. So we can write this as negative 1, take away root 3 times i, all divided by 2. So it's quite similar, but not quite the same. We've got a negative sign here. And then when we do x is 1 over 2 times z plus 1, let's substitute this in. So x equals 1 over 2 times z. Again, the 2s will cancel, so negative 1, take away root 3i, and then plus 1, because it was 2z plus 1. So then again, we have the plus 1 and the minus 1 cancel with each other, and this is just going to be 1 over negative root 3i. So this is actually just the negative of what we had before. So if we were to multiply on the top and bottom by root 3i, we would then get in the denominator 3 times i squared, but with the minus signs so that would become positive, so we'd have positive root 3 over 3 times i as our solution for x then when z is e to the 4 pi over 3 times i. And finally, we just need to consider z equals e to the 5 pi over 3 times i, which we write as cos 5 pi over 3 plus i sine 5 pi over 3. And now we know that cos 5 pi over 3 is a half, and we know that sine 5 pi over 3 is negative root 3 over 2. So we can write these over the common denominator of 2 as 1 minus root 3 times i over 2. So then when we substitute this into our formula for x, 1 over 2z plus 1, we're going to get x equals 1 over 1 minus root 3i plus another 1, where again the 2s cancel when we multiply z by 2 there. Then we can rewrite this as 1 over 2 minus root 3 times i, and we're going to multiply on the top and bottom by the conjugate, so 2 plus root 3i, and multiply on top by 2 plus root 3i, and this should really be in brackets here again. So we can re-express all of this as, first of all, we've got 2 plus root 3i in the numerator, and then the denominator we have 2 squared, then we have plus root 3 squared, the i squared gives us a negative 1, 
So we have 4 plus 3, so again we get 7 in the denominator. And you might spot at this point that actually our roots are coming in conjugate pairs here. We've got 2 minus root 3i over 7 and 2 plus root 3i over 7. And you could actually perhaps skip this last step if you know the result that if you have a polynomial with real coefficients, which we do, then all of its complex solutions come in conjugate pairs. So then we can write all of our solutions x then. First of all, our real solutions are negative 1 and a third. Then we have some pure imaginary solutions, plus or minus root 3 over 3 times i. And finally, we've got the complex solutions 2 plus or minus root 3i, all divided by 7. So then these are our six solutions to our original equation.